Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Lictor24 and it's time for another 40k news roundup. Try and do one of these a week, just round up all the 40k news that's been going down, just off the community website and just rumours in general really. So without further ado, let's get into it. Oh, by the way guys, sorry if you hear some snoring. That's the dog in the background, he's just lying on the settee snoring his arse off. But yeah, enough of that. Uh, the last week has been quite an interesting 40k. We've seen obviously the re-release of, well, the release of a load of new Solidesh models, which is really kind of still in focus, both in Age of Sigmar and 40k, because I think Slanesh is, of the four factions of Chaos, the one that probably needed needed an update or some new some new models the most. I mean, Korn, N well, Nurgle certainly have been uh, favoured quite a lot recently, 40k obviously kicking off 8th edition with uh, Nurgle vs. Ultramarines. Um, they've had a lot of new models. Corn always seems to be uh, regularly getting updates, or at least semi-regularly as far as Chaos goes. I mean, they're quite popular. And since they did have their own, well, 40k, they did have their own pri um, Demon Prince Primark with Magnus and their own Codex of Thousand Sons. A load of new models in regards to that. So, uh, Slanesh have be has been feeling like the, the odd man out. I know a lot of people with the latest, um, with the old Vigilist scenario going on, wanted to see a release of perhaps new Noise Marines or some new Slanesh, um, Slanesh inspired Care Space Breeze in general. Didn't get it, but you know, with with this um, new release of Slanesh Demons, it's given me hope for the future that we will see sooner rather than later a big release for Slanesh. As far as 40k goes, uh, more, more specifically, Emperor's Children. But, um, we'll talk about that in a bit. First off, with everything that's been happening at the tail end of last week, we had the Big Community Survey. Now, the Big Community Survey, in case you haven't noticed or not taken part in it before, basically, GW on the community website release a huge survey and ask everyone to participate in just to give you feedback to the company, which I think is really, really good. It's very rarely that uh, large companies ask or actively go out and try and recuperate feedback off their customers. Especially um, in the video game industry, because I do play a lot of games. It seems that a lot of the time they just don't care. Um, you hear all these uh, pieces on YouTube about companies like EA or Activision just generally making their products worse and not caring about feedback or at least doing the very bare minimum in response to terrible feedback to make it slightly less terrible. But uh, when Games Workshop release like um, a big, a, basically a big questionnaire and say, please fill this in, we want to know what you guys think of what's, it, it really is a good sign. Like the companies, uh, their ears are open and they are listening to our feedback. I myself, I know at the end of the questionnaire, they ask a question of one thing you could do. Um, I think it's, I think the question was one thing you could do to improve the hobby. What would it be? Um, I rather foolishly put... Uh, I wanted more worldwide campaigns, like the one that kicked off 8th, the fate of KOTOR, was it? KOTOR, KONTOR, the, the Ultramarines versus uh, Death Guard one. Big worldwide campaign, the battles you fight, you can add your results to a tally, and it would shape the narrative of 40k. I thought that would be a really interesting mechanic to play with the Games Workshop, where players, like certain times a year, like twice, three times a year, could have big campaigns to sort of alter the narrative and if they were really savvy about it and really clever about it, it could have people's armies maybe appear very lightly in the um in the actual fluff of 40k maybe on like a, a tiny paragraph mentioning a particular person's named character that they come up with themselves something like that it doesn't have to be really in depth or um or really really uh what's the word i'm looking for I think it's uh, involved. It doesn't have to be really involved. Let's say if you had a global campaign and um, in the global campaign you had like a proper tournament and at the end of the tournament, the actual winner of the tournament, their, their particular faction, you can name a character and that character would appear in the full 4 I thought that I thought that might be really rewarding and really engage the community in the actual hobby. But uh, on reflection, I thought to myself, no, the, the thing that would probably be better for the hobby on a whole, not just what I want, the thing that would be better for the hobby on a whole is if J Gates Workshop invested in larger stores particularly here in the uk i know my local store is not that big and i've said to my friends loads of times 
and people just generally ask this question. The best thing Games Workshop could do is have more floor space, more space to show off their products, rather than the uh, the tiny stores I've seen to I've seen to visit. Uh, I know that might not be the case for every store in the UK. It's certainly not the case for the actual HQ. That thing's massive, and has every single army of every single game on display. And that's ideally the scenario you want to be able to walk into a store and see all the products Games Workshop have to offer, all the gaming systems that they are offering at the moment, see the paint schemes to really get inspired to um, to participate in the hobby and just going down there and having a place to chill out and relax and uh, interact with the people who are doing the same hobby, the community in whole, it really would benefit the company and again, the hobby in general. So yeah, it's hindsight, it's 2020 to say, but yeah, bless, um, I, I think I'd, I'd be happy with more global campaigns, but I think for Games Workshop, investing in larger store spaces, larger stores in general, chill areas where the community can gather, take part in fun events, I think that would be more beneficial for them all. But it'll be interesting to see if we get any, if we get any feedback ourselves from this community survey, like, well, X amount of you said this, and uh, X amount of you said that. That would be quite interesting to watch, or read rather. But uh, yeah, we'll have to find out. Um, I'm sure all will be revealed in the fullness of time. Next up, we had a White Dwarf preview for May. And this preview, obviously, centres largely around the Inari. They are smack dab on the front of the actual, uh, the actual magazine itself. Uh, in this preview, we are going to get uh, rules for the three characters that make up the uniquely Unari. Well, I say army. It's three models can't really be an army. Unari is one of those things. I know I've, one of my friends was hoping for like a a pure Unari codex, and with this with this white dwarf release, I think any hope of that has been has been dashed on the rocks of reality. Unari only have three models to the name. They've got the avatar. They've got. I'm not going to try and pronounce them. Basically, they've got the, the, the Psyker and they've got the Warrior. And they can pull uh, other units from either Aldari or Drukari. I don't think they can pull anything from Harlequins. But they can amalgamate those two together to make a force of their own. And become their own unique force. And I don't think Games Workshop are going to bother releasing a codex for that. When they can just sell a magazine which will have... The relics, the stratagems, the dash sheets for the three purely uniquely Unari characters. And just say, well, you can make up an army like this, 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 and this. I mean, it would be nice if I had a bit of fluff in there. I'm sure it will. Obviously, the background of the Unari, the background of the three individual characters themselves. But, yeah, with the release of this, I think Games Workshop are saying the same as the Assassins when they release that. That there's no point in releasing. I may be wrong, by the way. Before I go on, I may be 100% wrong. I've been wrong about stuff before. But with this, I think Games Workshop is saying there's no point in us trying to hammer together or, you know, cobble together a codex around these units when codexes already exist out there for the, the vast majority of units that are going to be in this army. You're only going to buy this for the three, three characters and the story. And I don't think that's going to be enough to pad out a codex. But then again, I could be proven wrong. They, they've uh, released Adeptus Codes, Custodes, Codes, the um, the Custards Codex, and they don't have a lot of models, but they've certainly got more than three. But you know, that's the focus of this white dwarf. There's other stuff in there as well, but for 40k, that's the uh, that's the main headline grabber there. Uh, bad news for anyone that's holding out for a Unari Codex, I feel, but I think this is just the way they're going to go with these sort of like amalgamation factions or mini factions like your Assassins and your Unari. Not going to release Codexes, just going to release uh, White Dwarfs with the rules in. But, hey ho, what are you going to do? Right, uh, next up. Now, this is an odd one because this one just really came out of nowhere for me. I don't follow Forge World that much. Um, obviously, if it's a new Tyranid release or. In the future, if there's ever new new G Steel Court release, I'll be following that religiously. But as far as everything else goes for Forge World, don't really pay attention to it that much unless there's something that really, really catches my eye. Like in the past, the uh, the new Custodian models, because they were really, really nice to look at. Squeaky chair. Uh, so when obviously we got an announcement saying that like, the Chaos Warhound Titan is coming back, I was like, did it ever 
go anywhere in the first place. I wasn't aware that they stopped selling these things. I mean, the Chaos Warhound Titan's been around ever since I started getting into the hobby. It's really, it's a nice looking model, but it's a really quite old, old looking model. Uh, well, it's it's not old looking. It's it's aged really really well. It's um it's just an old sculpt. Um, as far as I was aware, and I, I wasn't. I wasn't under the impression that they discontinued at any point, but apparently they must have done, or it must have been out of stock or something, because we've got a update on the on the old Warmer Community page that it's come back. Now, I don't understand the relationship between Forge World and Games Workshop at the best of times. I mean, let's not forget the um, shenanigans Forge World or GW as a whole pulled with the old shipping. Forge World items, I think it was last year, how the prices for shipping outside the UK uh, to other countries is is stupid and it's it's something we shouldn't forget. For all the good stuff that Games Workshop and Forge will do, we should never ever ever forget the time they've tried to royally screw their customer base and that's what that was to me with the um, the shipping costs for outside the, outside the UK, particularly to America where the, the market for this stuff is huge and especially Australia. I mean, they down in Australia, they get it rough most times with shipping costs, but it was just absolutely ridiculous. And I don't, I can't remember the um, the old ins and outs of it off the top of my head, but from what I can remember, it was really taking the piss of it, what they tried to do. But yeah, um, we should never forget the bad stuff just as inside there, as just so we understand that Games Workshop and Forge Worlds don't always hit out the park. Sometimes they swing and miss, but miss badly. But anyway, that's besides the point. Warhound Titan is back. Wasn't aware it went anywhere, but with the new Chaos release of Vigilus and with the big open day down in Coventry, I think, coming up, the one I'm going to in two, two and a bit weeks' time, I think one of the two of these things might be getting picked up to uh, to really put the, the shining gem in most people's Chaos armies because these things look really good like i said they've aged really well they still look good today and nothing says you mean business when a big old titans in your army as well and oh yeah we've got apocalypse game released soon haven't we the uh the new version of apocalypse which i'm really looking forward to don't have enough mods to play apocalypse game myself don't have any titans but ugh, the thought of having huge armies of 40k just smashing each other to bits is um is a really fun idea and i can't wait to see the rules and the battle reports that are going to come out online for that so, yeah, looking forward to that. Pick up a new Warlord Titan, Chaos, or Imperium if you want to, because apparently they're back. Apparently. Right then, um, a new Rumor Engine. And as you can see from the picture there, it's tentacles. It's tentacles and spikes. So, as far as 40k goes, this could be, well, rule out Imperium. You can rule out Tau. I think you could safely rule out Eldar. I think you could safely rule out Orcs. Guess it doesn't look like an orky thing. Safely rule out... I'd say Necrons. I can't see Necrons big in the tentacle market. Mandible market, maybe, for some of their big robot spiders, but not tentacles. Chaos. They just had a big release. Could be more on the horizon for Chaos. Maybe some new... Uh, Suneshi, Space Breen, Empress Children thing in the future? Maybe. Could be. Jukari? Mm, yeah, I could see this hanging off a pain engine. Like a homunculus weapon of torture. Yeah, fair enough. Gene Steel Occult? Uh, maybe, I suppose. It looks to be more akin to a Tyranid thing than a, uh, than a Gene Steel Occult thing. It depends, because you can't really get from the picture if these tentacles and the hooks and barbs on them give off a metal feel or they if they look organic or not it's hard to tell without any paint on them i know that's stating the obvious but yeah but i hope it's something for tyranids It'd be really nice but it could be jakari it could be chaos it could be tyranids um yeah i'd say it's one of those three either new chaos something new for jakari or maybe new tyranids but hey i'm sure again we'll find out eventually but interesting to theorise, and anyway, uh, well, interesting to theorise in general, really. Moving on. Right, it seems that we were talking about it earlier, we'll, we'll do it, albeit a little bit briefly. Warmer Fest is coming up in, I think it's as time of this recording, about two and a bit weeks' time. At, uh, I think it's the 11th. They've released the schedule for it, 
on the Gaze Workshop community page, and I myself will be attending. I know a lot of people go down to this thing. I've been, I've gone for the past two years in the bounce. The same with the open day at Warmer World at the end of the year. I think it's in November time. I've gone to that one two years in the bounce. Uh, anyone that's thinking about going down there, still haven't picked up the ticket, and are uh, sort of on the fence, I encourage you to go. Don't go down there expecting to have a ram-packed day full of entertainment and things to do unless you're going down there with your armies or with your paints and intend to do hobbying and whatnot. If you're going down there to browse and attend seminars, you will have enough to do, but it won't be enough to last you a full day in my experience. Now, I will be definitely jumping into the 40k new release and preview seminar. That's the first thing on the first day. Because hopefully, unlike last year, we'll get... I'm almost certain we'll get an update on the sisters. Perhaps we'll get more pictures, more, more of a larger view of the army as it's taking shape on a whole. I know we had uh, last week a new image of the pilot for the pain engine. I think it was the head and the, uh, the very sort of like plugged into the matrix look it had about it which i really really liked uh, hopefully we'll get more more like that because sisters is not that far away it's only just over half a year away now which isn't that far in the grand scheme of things time does go fast when you're constantly busy and hobbying and whatnot so before we know it sisters will be on our doorstep if i had this conversation with a friend last uh Last weekend, just gone, he, he said to me, what do you think will be revealed at... I think he said, what do you think will be revealed at the preview, or will we get any big, get any big reveals? And last time we went to the, the big open day, and we attended the 40k preview, we didn't, we didn't get any big reveals. Which was a shame, because I think at the time we were hoping for a big orc reveal. We didn't get that. We got um, we got some new pictures of sisters, and we got spells and whatnot for Age of Sigmar and some other things. Nothing, nothing major 40k related that we were hoping for. And I said to him, my friend, if if Games Workshop really wanted to move box sets and move miniatures, because it's going to be a box set. I think Games Workshop have locked into the box set idea. Two forces in a box set works out cheaper on the whole. People buy them, split them down, sell them on eBay, whatnot. I think they're locked into that idea now. It seems to be working well for them. But if I had to put my money on anything, I would say, I would hope that games. Well, I would hope that they were these whole brand new line of Tyranids and things like that. But I'm living in the real world, and Games Workshop make money by selling Space Marines, and they make money by selling Chaos immediately after. So, seeing as though we've already got two Chaos Primarchs in the form of Mortarian and Magnus, I think now is the time, I think it's been over a year now, or just over a year since they've dropped, that the Loyalists will get a new Primarch. And I know I've watched a few videos on the internet saying the rumours that um, Imperial Fists will be getting a Codex and Rogal Dawn will be making a return. Don't see it myself. I... I don't think Imperial Fists have enough to warrant their own codex. I know that uh, opinion's been echoed by a few other people. But if I had to put my money on a on a pairing, I'm um, say a pairing, just to keep Chaos involved. If I had to put my money on a pairing of Primarchs to come out, a pairing of Primarchs, I would say the next logical choice for the Loyalist would be the Lion. The next logical choice for the, the Forces of Chaos would be Fulgrim. The line of Fulgrim, they would be the top two pairing, well, the top pairing. The second pairing after that would be Lehman Russ, Space Wolves, because again, they've got an existing codex. He has, he could be rewritten into the story a lot easier than um, Rogal Dawn could. And then for the Forces of Chaos, I'd say Agron, because big, angry, axy, scary man, grrr, and again, he's, it's got to be one of the four, one of the four pillars of chaos. You've got Sutnesh, obviously Korn, Tzinch, Nurgle, we've already got, we've already got Nurgle locked down. We've already got Zinch locked down in the form of 
Magnus and Mortarion. So it makes sense that it's either going to be Fulgrim or Angron on the Chaos side. But I'd say Fulgrim over Angron just because he's been mentioned more in the edition storyline than Angron to this point. Uh, and I think he would be a good foil story-wise for Gilliman. Obviously with their history of him almost killing Gilliman or perpetually semi-killing him. That would be an interesting return. So yeah, it would be the Lion and Fulgrim. Or it would be um, Lehman Ross and Angron, or a mix of the two. For outliers, real outliers, I'd say Vulcan for the Salamanders, or I would say Lorgar for the Forces of Chaos Undivided. Again, those two are real, real outliers. But that's why that's why I sort of predict if Games Workshop wanted to drop a big bulb bomb at this big open day, then they would reveal a Primark. It would it would probably be a Loyalist Primark, then another Chaos Primark. Because at this point, if they release another Chaos Primark, everyone would be like, what the hell, that's three to one now. Where's 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 all the Primarchs? Where's where's the Lion? Where's Lehman Russ? Where's Vulcan? Where, where are the others? The Khan, uh, Korax, you know? And um, I just said his name twice, P.O. Fist guy. Uh, yeah, whatever. But yeah. Definitely, I think a Primark will be announced because that would really put the car amongst the pigeons and make people really excited. And as for box set, definitely I'd go for Empress Children versus some form of um, Primaris Marine unit. Empress Children have to be sued with all the new Slanesh releases. It makes sense to release Empress Children or announce Empress Children immediately after the Sulnesh Demons have been announced, which we'll talk about in a second, and to be the the cherry on that particular cake, or the cherry on top of that particular big pile of hedonism, would be Fulgrim. So, yeah. Fulgrim, Empress Children, at the open day, and probably the line as well. Dark Angels, get a new release as well. That's my prediction. Probably going to be horribly wrong, but we'll find out. Speaking of Slanesh, it can't escape anyone's notice that we've had a big release of Bran Spanker's new Slanesh Demons for Age of Sigmar and 40k. And hot damn, they look good. I Just before I continue, I would love to see, be able to see 3D rotating models of these on the community website. Not going to go over the rules because I don't know demon rules to begin with. And there are probably a lot better people than me that can go in depth to the meta and break down the rules whether they're good, bad, okay. Uh, I'm not a very meta player. I don't play the game particularly well, I think. But, you know, I can definitely appreciate the new models. And I've always said that I think that Slanesh, or particularly the Empress Children, or any Chaos bands of Slanesh, would do well if they leaned into the sort of Cenobite sort of territory, or took inspiration from them. For anyone who is not aware, Cenobites are the, the antagonists of the Hellraiser franchise, the old horror franchise. I think it was from the late ni uh, late 80s, early 90s. Uh, basically, they were priests of hell. And I think they, from what I can remember, they encompassed excess in one form or another. You had, uh, I think it was the Doctor, who was uh, um, addicted to making people beautiful. I think he ended up being the antagonist of the thir first one. Uh, and you had all sorts of different Cenobites. And they would look really, really disturbing. I know they had the uh, the Cenobite. Of, like, one was like Hunger. Basically, he was like a big mouth with no eyes. That kind of thing. And I think Slanesh, because obviously Slanesh in company, um, encapsulates excess in all its forms. Whether it's uh, lust, greed, uh, pride, anything like that. Whenever a mortal... Um, indulges too much in one aspect of life to an excess, that's when Slanesh gets more powerful. That's when they're paying tribute to that god. And I think all the demons of Slanesh, all the followers of Slanesh, the mortal followers, that probably will be happening in an Empress Children's Codex, should lead into the Hellraiser set of eye sort of design aspect. And I think that would look really good. But as far as demons go, I think Games Workshop have nailed it. I would have loved to have seen a different paint scheme on these, not just sticking to the the sort of purpley, pur dark purple pinks that we've got. I would have loved to seen a, maybe a pale sort of flesh, that kind of thing. But the ones that have gone the the website look really, really nice, and we'll go through them now. We've got the brand new Keeper of Secrets, which is their head honcho of most demon armies. 
Not my keeper secrets. Um, you got different ones. You got uh, the bloodthirsters, the un grey unclean ones, the keeper, not the keeper of secrets. That's the slanesh one and the Zinch one, the big bird guy. Um, got a brand new one of them, and this is one of the models specifically that I wanted to see a 360 view of because I can't really get a good gauge for the depth of this thing. It looks regal and sort of caught sort of concubine sort of feel to it and that's really really good the way that the 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 cloak is attached to the wrist guards of its lower arms obviously the the, the two main arms are big old pincers obviously got the nice the sort of headdress there it really gives off a sort of regal and elegant feel which for slanesh is what you really want to be hitting for particularly in the demons. These things have got to be terrifying, but f terrifying in the ex in the sense that you can't look away from them. That kind of thing that they are they are beautiful and terrifying to behold at the same time. That's the idea they want to hit for, and I think with this keeper of secrets they've really knocked it out of the park. The sort of half and half and androgynous nature of his sexuality is also really good. Um, I'm glad Games Workshop have moved far away from the just blatantly open chested sort of your chesticles are on on show for all to see kind of thing i think that this new model is a lot classier than the really old keeper secrets and i think with this particular design philosophy the the beautiful but terrifying sort of thing that they are really heading in the right direction keeper secrets 10 out of 10 for me really good model again would like to see it from behind who were but I'm sure it will be released in the fullest of time that we can all see that. But from the front, it looks damn good. Moving on, we've got the the named Keeper of Secrets, I think. The... Oh, God. Uh, apologies in advance, everyone, if I'm going to be butchering these names. But what are you going to do? Shalaxi Hellblane. Hellblane? Hellbane. Does not look as good as the Keeper of Secrets proper, in my opinion. Dark colour scheme works really nice. Uh, just because I think this one gives off a more less concubine sort of enchantress type of feel, more straight up warrior type of feel, or sort of a regal, like a warrior prince kind of thing. And I just don't think it works as well. It looks good, but in my opinion, not as good as the Keeper of Secrets proper. I think that... I don't know. I think it's it's the way that they've lost the cape. Obviously, the cape being joined at the um, being joined at the wrist really gave the um, the keeper of secrets a lot of presence, sort of like a larger footprint. And with this one, just having the spear and the shield and keeping quite tight to the body makes it look kind of smaller to me. It might just be because the picture actually is itself is smaller, but to me, not as good as the keeper of secrets. Very nice, but not quite as good. This one, the next one, I really do like because it's a, uh, it's basically a demon prince and demon hybrid, and I've I like how they've moved away from the standard demon prince model, basically the big horn dude. I know uh, that Nurgle had their own particular brand of demon prince, the big bloated guy, but now Slanesh got their own unique demon prince as well, and again, really like it. Big guy covered in tattoos. Really clean looking, really regal looking, again, with the regal aspect of it. And with a demon combo, it looks really good. This one hits out the park, probably my favourite model of the release. Uh, oh god, another name. Shileski, the Vengeful Alliance. Again, it's a part herald, part demon prince, and looks really, really good. So sort of like uh, the great humongous thing going on from Mad Max, except less apocalyptically man maxi and more I, I don't know like the guy gives off a, like a king xerxes from the 300 kind of feel about him like a really big muscular guy not ugly not not horrible to look at just just a really perfect specimen of a human and again that's what the, a demon prince of slanesh should be a perfect specimen uh, to take into excess all the tattoos the it looks Elegant in its simplicity, and the demon on his back is a nice top, uh, nice little uh, touch to that with the whip. It's a unique model, just like two units working together, 
and I think this one comes off the best of all the all the releases we've seen so far for the 40k side of Slanesh. And the the last one is the corrupt the contorted epitome. And this goes back to something I was saying previously. I don't know if it was in a previous video or in a um, previously to my friends. Games Workshop seem to be leaving heavily into every time a new release comes out for an army, then you're going to get some terrain as well. I think they're starting to build terrain into armies and fortifications and that kind of thing a lot more. And this is a piece of terrain to me. I know some people might point out, well, you've got the two demons there as well. But it, it comes across more as like a mobile piece of terrain for me. Uh, a big old cursed mirror that helps you deny psychic tests and cast psychic tests. This one to me, it's it's meh. The, the demons look nice. Look like they're joyfully cavorting around this big cursed mirror. Looks clean, looks nice. There's not really much I can say about this, guys. It's, it's, not, um, it's not tickling my fancy as much as the Keeper of Secrets or the, the Demon Prince. Um, it's just a nice little piece of terrain that we have in Slanesh Armies from now on. So, yeah. And that, guys, is it for this 40k news roundup. Sorry for the video being so long, guys. Been really busy, so I'm trying to at least put out one video a week just to keep people updated and, well, just to report on the things that I'm seeing. But, again, I thank you all for watching and listening, and I will catch you all next time. See you later.